the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, colonized by species not found so far from land. A garbage patch drifting across the Pacific Ocean has been colonized by animals that are alien to the open waters of the ocean. Among the masses of plastic waste, the researchers found many species normally inhabiting coastal environments. Islands of plastic waste form as surface currents drive pollutants from coastal areas into the ocean. There, garbage is held back by other currents and accumulates over time. There are at least five similar waste islands in the world. The Great Pacific Garbage Patch, located between California and Hawaii, contains the most floating plastic. Experts estimate that there may be as many as 79,000 tons, spread over an area of over 1.5 million square kilometers. Now it turns out that similar floating dumps have become home to coastal species of plants and animals. In the Great Pacific Garbage Patch ecosystem, scientists have found species that are normally confined to coasts. The description and results of the research were published in the journal, Nature Ecology and Evolution. Can garbage help animals get to other continents? The Great Pacific Garbage Patch is growing year by year as more tons of plastic waste are added to it. By the way, mainly from China, Japan, South Korea, the United States, Taiwan or Canada. This garbage dump will continue to grow unless drastic action is taken. It's hard to imagine a more unnatural environment than an island of plastic waste floating in the ocean. However, some species are somehow able to live there. Moreover, they include animals usually associated with coastal environments. After the earthquake in Japan in 2011, which resulted in a powerful tsunami, Hundreds of species of invertebrates got stuck in the debris washed up in the Pacific, only to end up off the coast of North America and Hawaii in 2017. You could say that in this surprising way. And against their will, these creatures became invasive species. In the same way, scientists believe that longer distances may also be able to overcome animals that move with the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. What species are able to go on such an extreme journey into the unknown? Scientists have collected various samples of garbage drifting in the Pacific and are looking at what exactly lives in them. First of all, it was found that, in general, the presence of life in places such as garbage patches is probably much more frequent and widespread than expected. When the garbage was looked at more closely, it turned out that as much as 70% of the 105 plastic items collected were invertebrates living, usually on the coast, such as crustaceans and bryozoa. What is even more surprising? Not only were they somehow able to survive, but they even did quite well. Well enough that they were able to live in a garbage patch long enough and in good enough health to reproduce. However, one piece of the puzzle remains a mystery to scientists. Specifically, how are these animals physiologically able to survive there at all, and where do they find food? The fact is, however, that if, as it turns out, this is not difficult for them, then the conclusion suggests itself, it could lead to significant changes in the functioning of the ocean ecosystem. Scientists have obtained a new isotope of uranium. A group of physicists from Japan and Korea managed to obtain a previously unknown uranium isotope, uranium-241. The newly produced isotope has a half-life of only 40 minutes. Probably the first thing that comes to mind when mentioning uranium and its isotopes is nuclear weapons. However, this element also has quite a few peaceful uses. Recently, a completely new isotope of it was obtained, although whether it will be useful for anything at all is currently doubtful. 
The description and results of the research were published in the journal, Physical Review Letters. Uranium belongs to a class of elements on the periodic table called actinides. This group consists of 15 metals. All actinides are radioactive. But uranium is one of the four most radioactive elements, along with radium, polonium and thorium. The most common isotope of uranium is uranium-238. It is a naturally occurring isotope. Now researchers have obtained a new isotope of this element, uranium-241. We had to wait quite a long time for the discovery, and in fact the production of another such heavy isotope of uranium, over 40 years, as it was last achieved in 1979. In turn, not so long ago. In 2021, Chinese researchers managed to produce the lightest uranium isotope, uranium-214. We owe U-241 to the Japanese High Energy Accelerator Research Organization. But what do the numbers in isotope labels mean anyway? The nuclei of atoms contain protons and neutrons, except hydrogen. While the number of protons is the same for all isotopes, the number of neutrons varies. In the case of uranium isotopes, all of them have 92 protons, but they differ in the number of neutrons. The newly obtained uranium isotope has 149 neutrons. So 92 plus 149 equals 241. The isotopes differ from each other. Level of stability. Some retain it all the time, unless they are exposed to, for example, radiation. However, in the case of uranium, we cannot say that the element has any fully stable isotopes at all. However, two of them, U-235 and U-238, take so long to decay that even now we can find a significant number of them that still remember the formation of our planet. For example, the half-life of U-238 is as much as 4.5 billion years. Among other isotopes, U-233, U-234 and U-236 can also be mentioned, but their amount is significantly smaller. All uranium isotopes other than the five listed above have already been produced in laboratories. So far, the U-220 has not been obtained. However, up to U-242 all the gaps have already been filled. However, in the context of the U-241 itself, we have both good and bad news. The bad thing is that, unfortunately, its half-life is quite short, as it is only about 40 minutes. On the other hand, the half-life of many isotopes is measured not even in minutes, but in micro or nanoseconds. Such an extremely unstable isotope is the lightest U-214 to date, with an estimated time of just 0.005 seconds possibly three times more, depending on the opinion of scientists. So, and that's the good news. At least scientists have potentially enough time to study the properties of U-241. What happens to U-241 when it breaks up? Well, it emits beta radiation and, by changing the number of protons, transforming neutrons into protons, transforms into Neptunium-241, which lasts for 14 minutes, and finally transforms into Plutonium-241. And although this total of 40 minutes, compared to many other uranium isotopes, seems quite stable, it is precisely because of its short half-life that it is doubtful that any concrete practical application will be found for it.